Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with some juice to get you through the long night. You have asked for this, and guess what? Today is the day. Today is the day where I destroy the season eight plot leaks. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the season eight fake plot leaks. So today I say this to the season eight plot leaks. Winter has come for you. If you thought that I was just going to call it stupid and fake without giving you the proper credible reasons as to why, then you are mistaken and winter is coming. So the first thing I want to point out is the differences between the season seven plot leak and this season eight fan fiction thing that we have going on. So the season seven plot leak came from a Reddit user away for the lads. Away for the lads later deleted his account or his account was deleted. These plot leaks came out in October after filming had begun, which means a lot of people had access to these scripts by the time this plot leak came out. So away for the lads was the source for the plot leak. Now later, a Spanish YouTuber who is notoriously known for predicting, well not really predicting, but knowing the script and actual dialogue before it happens, he basically shared his intel via YouTube. That YouTuber is Freaky Doctor. He's been doing this for some time now, season after season, and he's always right. So for season seven, plot leak and dialogue and whatever else was out there, all of it, no matter where you heard it from, all of it was basically from two sources, Freaky Doctor and Away for the Lads. You could find the leaks on multiple sites and under multiple names, multiple posts, multiple videos, but if you check the dates, everything was done or made after Away for the Lads and Freaky Doctor. And most of everything that was posted was Away for the Lads and Freaky Doctor's YouTube videos translated into English. Fricky and Away for the Lads were 100% right. Also, when these plot leaks dropped, we had a round two of the leaks where it was like kind of fan fiction. A poster took Away for the Lads, original leak, and then embellished on that and turned out to be completely false. When the first leak happened, multiple media outlets reported on it. It was a big, big thing, and yes, some people didn't believe some of the stuff, myself included. Another big thing about the Season 7 plot leak is a way for the lads account was deleted. Also, Fricky Doctor's videos were taken down by HBO, and he almost got into a legal battle with HBO. Now, this happened previously, so this year he stopped using Game of Thrones images all together and he just used like his whole self like his him sitting in front of a camera and they still took that shit down so the fact that some of these leaks have been around since season 7 ended and HBO has done nothing to remove said leaks or anything like that so that should lend even less credence to these leaks because they were removing season 7 stuff left and right until it was just massive and too time consuming to even fool with it. So the fact that HBO is chilling and letting these posts stay up means something just ain't right. So these leaks came out back in July. So the scripts were done at least by July 23rd. We had a confirmation from the program and president at HBO during a tour that he did that the scripts were done. But none of the actors have the scripts as of right now. So HBO was hacked. But what hackers got their hands on is really unknown. I doubt it was the season 8 script. I mean, let's be honest. The hackers said they had multiple episodes of Game of Thrones, but they didn't release any episodes. Episode 4 was released by Star India, and episode 6 was released accidentally by HBO Spain. If they had half of the stuff that they claimed to have, then they would have released something and tried to hurt HBO financially. And the best way for them to accomplish this would have been to release unaired episodes of Game of Thrones and they didn't so it looks like they didn't get any Game of Thrones stuff if these hackers had a plot leak of season 8 believe me it would be big news 
people would be covering it left and right just like they covered the supposed episode 4 script that they had. They didn't hack HBO and get an episode 4 script. That was already readily available on the internet. But back to what I was saying. So right now, we know the scripts are in limited hands. Which means, if someone was to leak them, they could be narrowed down quite easily and caught. So if a person was to leak a script, it would make more sense for them to wait until everyone has the script so it isn't easy to narrow down who leaked it. That seems to be what A Way For The Lads did. Once everyone had their script and they couldn't pinpoint who it was, he leaked the script. But let's talk about what's actually written for Season 8 Episode 1 without laughing. Depending on what website you read, the leaks are different on each website. They change, stuff gets added, stuff gets taken away. There are multiple websites posting multiple different ridiculous scripts. It's a travesty. It is a travesty. The 1% chance that any of these scripts is real makes my stomach hurt. It's bad. It's like every freaking fan theory piled into one. It, but. Let's talk about what's going to happen in Season 8, Episode 1. Um, don't laugh. So, I'll be drawing from Reddit and also a website that posts a lot of spoilers called Dragon and the Wolf. Like I said, there's about 40 different leaks right now. So, I'm going to try not to laugh, but let's just talk. So, Season 8, Episode 1. First scene. Aftermath of the Night King's attack on Castle Black. Tormund and Gendry are able to flee the scene. Undead Viserion sets crows and undead afire. Lord Beric Dondarrion stays behind to fight the White Walkers. Dies off screen, but not before killing the White Walker that killed Ed. Ed is stabbed to death by a White Walker. Tormund and Gendry ride for Winterfell whilst we see a burning Castle Black in the background. Okay, so we somehow are at Castle Black, and the Night King attacked Castle Black, and Tormund and Gendry managed to escape. Even though we didn't see Gendry in Episode 7, and we have no idea where he is, he magically appeared at Castle Black, and Tormund magically appeared with him. So, the only way that Tormund and Beric made it to Castle Black is if they ran down the wall towards the west, which is possible. But this leak is being presented to us as if the writer has confused Eastwatch and Castle Black. So we saw the White Walkers marching south, not west. So it doesn't make sense for the Night King and his army to march west to Castle Black. And clearly the Night King's army is marching south. And why is the Night King even concerned about Castle Black? Like, they have under a hundred men right now. So what is he gonna go take Castle Black so he can add a hundred men to his undead army? He's gonna march his dragon and his hundred thousand men to Castle Black to get a hundred more men out of here clearly whoever wrote this fan fiction was not paying attention and they think east watch is castle black so then it goes on to say daenerys john Tyrion, davos jor brienne podrick the hound missande varies and theon arrive in winterfell davos remarks that it has gotten much colder and darker since he has left with john john and Arya are the first reunited daenerys meets sansa stark and sansa asks whether she and john are in love now <laughs> Daenerys doesn't give a proper response to that. Sansa doesn't seem too pleased with Jon returning to Winterfell and Daenerys' presence. Jon notices this and chats with her. She mentions Littlefinger's death and how he always betrayed them right under their nose. She says it is plain stupid to work together with Cersei Lannister. The Hound and Arya also have a conversation with each other. Arya tells the Hound that she didn't regret to leave him behind without having him killed off. The Hound answers that Arya should have had him killed off right there especially with all the things he has seen beyond the wall this whole Winterfell scene is stupid uh, firstly major red flag is Theon we know Theon went to rescue Yara he wasn't going with Jon to Winterfell he was going to save his sister which means he's going to find Euron and he thinks Euron is on Pike because that's where Euron said he was going even though Euron was lying but Theon doesn't know that 
but this plot leak was published before season 7 ended, so the person writing this fanfiction plot leak probably didn't know that. Even though they should have known that because it was released per Freaky Doctor if only this person had been diligent. Sansa just blurting out, so are you two in love, makes zero sense. Even if she's upset about it or anything of that sort, as you can see from the finale, she's learned a lot. And blurting out her thoughts isn't something our newly founded Sansa is like to do. Euron Greyjoy arrives back in King's Landing with the Golden Company and meets up with Cersei Lannister and the commanders of the Golden Company in the throne room. Cersei thanks Euron for having the cell sword shipped to King's Landing. Cersei orders the commander in chief to take Storm's End and to have the army gathered in their fortress. Robert Baratheon once told her that the fortress has stood for many centuries and she's sure that it will keep standing during the long night. Later that night, Euron Greyjoy is about to have sex with Cersei Lannister. Euron jokes that she won't miss her brother after she finds out what he can give her. Cersei's face says enough. She isn't too pleased with Euron in her bed, possible nudity- Uh, like, okay, okay. You may ask, if this plot leak isn't real, then how do they know about Euron getting the Golden Company? Well. Fricky said this back in June, that this would happen, that the Golden Company thing with Cersei and Euron would happen. This is already public information, and his video has been translated into English more than a hundred times by the time this plot leak was generated. But furthermore, why would the Golden Company need to take Storm's End? If Dragonstone was left open for Daenerys, so will be Storm's End. There were... I can't see them leaving Dragonstone wide open for the taking, but draw out some big battle scene at Storm's End for the Golden Company like it just doesn't make sense. Theon Greyjoy visits the Godswood of Winterfell and thinks of his friend Rob. When he meets with Bran Stark, he immediately apologizes to Bran for everything he has done against House Stark, but Bran tells him there's no need for that. He knows that Theon has redeemed himself. Oh my god. So, you know what? This is stupid. Let's drag all of this. This is supposed to be a plot leak, as in, a plot leak would be the White Walkers are marching south. John and Danny are in Winterfell. Cersei is assembling her army. That's a plot leak. In plot leaks, you don't get the thoughts of characters. So Theon thinking about Rob in the Godswood, how do you get that? How do you know from a plot leak what Theon is thinking about? And how is that conveyed to the audience without a flashback or dialogue? We know Dan and Dave don't really like doing flashbacks did not want to do flashbacks because oftentimes it seems like a, a hallmark of kind of lazy storytelling. And the only time we have ever gotten a flashback is through Bran. Oh, but no, these plot leaks not only say that Yara will have visions after Euron gives her shade of the evening, but that we will end up in Greywater Watch sometime in episode one, and Hal and Reed will be having flashbacks from the last time he saw Jojen, because that will really advance the story somehow. And don't let me forget to mention that the whole Pentoshi storyline, oh yes, there's a whole storyline in Pentos with John Cunnington having flashbacks about Rhaegar and young Griff aka Aegon number one looking for his brother John aka Aegon number two. According to these leaks all of this will happen and it's like have we even been watching the same show for the past seven seasons? Because I can't see this happening. I can't see any of this being real. Not just because it sucks and it's inconsistent, just because factually it's unlikely. Like it's almost impossible. I have said I want Young Griff to make an appearance. If he does come on the show, I doubt we will get a whole Pentoshi storyline with John Cunnington having flashbacks for God's sakes. Also, in these six episodes, Daenerys and Jon will marry. Almost everyone dies. Daenerys has a baby by Jon. It's a girl. Her name is Lyanna Stark Targaryen, and she is queen of the Seven Kingdoms with Tyrion as her king regent until she comes of age. Not bittersweet. Really stupid don't like. It's not real. I could go into even further instances of nonsensical BS, like when Bran wargs into John and then wargs into a tree and then shows John his birth and stuff. It's weird. It's not real. I get how people could 
believe certain aspects of this plot leak that actually reads more like a script leak but for the most part I don't understand it I could write a fan fiction plot for season 8 post it on reddit right now and people will believe it's real like should I do that I'll link the leaks that I read for this video just for the sake of crediting the people who posted this nonsense I don't recommend that you read it because you might lose brain cells in the process I don't have anything against the people who believe it make videos on it or wrote it whatever I just think I would be doing a huge disservice if I didn't just point out how obviously fake this plot is by all means watch it and indulge in it knowing that it's fan fiction and has tons of red flags and is completely opposite and not at all similar to season 7 plot leaks in any way shape form or fashion thanks for watching if you like videos like this please click that subscribe button hit that thumbs up button hit that notification bell and join the sweet summer family okay my sweet summer children have a good day shame shame